Hello and welcome to the session. This is Professor Farhat in which we would look at CPA exam questions that deals with audit planning, an important stage of the audit process. This topic is covered on the CPA exam auditing section as well as an auditing course, whether it's a graduate or undergraduate. As always, I would like to remind you to connect with me on LinkedIn if you haven't done so. YouTube is where you would need to subscribe. I have 1,700 plus accounting, auditing, tax, finance, as well as Excel tutorials. If you like my lectures, please like them, share them, put them in playlists. If they help you, they might help other people as well. Connect with me on Instagram. On my website, farhatlectures.com, I do have additional resources for whatever accounting or auditing course you are taking. For example, if you are studying for audit, audit planning, I do have an audit course. And audit planning is an important component of your CPA exam. Simply put, a CPA review course would review audit planning with you. I explain and teach you this process in my auditing course. That's the difference between what I do and any other review course that does an excellent job reviewing the material with you once you have learned it properly and you can learn it properly on farhatlectures.com if you haven't done so at your university. So let's take a look at the first question. Which of the following procedures will be an auditor likely to perform in the planning stage of a financial statement audit? Okay, let's take a look at the answers and see uh, what do we do in the planning stage? Obtain a signed agreement letter from the client's management. Do we do this uh, during the planning stage? Is it something that we do during the planning stage? And the answer is yes. You want to kind of gain an understanding with the client, and this is when you will get a signed engagement letter. Now, the question is, well, I'll keep that for later. But yes, getting a signed engagement letter is something that you do in the planning stage. Therefore, we keep A, we take out B, we keep C, take out D. All that we have to find out now is if two is a correct or incorrect statement. If two is correct, C is the answer. If two is incorrect, one is the answer. Examining documents to detect violation of laws and regulation having a material effect on the financial statement. Look, this statement sounds correct, sounds reasonable, sounds like a good answer. Okay, it is. We do examine document to detect violation of laws and regulation that have a material effect on the financial statements. We do that. That's not the question is, do we do it during the planning stage? And the answer is no. We do this when we are basically collecting evidence or maybe we might do it um, as a final step if we missed something toward the end. But definitely we don't do this in the planning stage. So remember, the, the statement is correct, and this is why auditing is tricky. You have to understand auditing, that what do you do during certain stage? You have a planning stage, you have the audit stage, which is during the audit, and you have the wrap-up, which is the end of the audit. So you have to know what do we do in each stage. So in, in this stage, we only kind of obtain, for our purposes, among other things, we obtain understanding uh, obtain a signed letter from the client's management, understanding our response, spelling out our responsibility and understanding the management responsibility. Therefore, the answer is A. So this is why auditing is tricky because you see the right answer, but that's not what you do for now. Inquiries of the predecessor auditor prior to accepting the engagement should include specific question, questions regarding what? So here's what happened. Once you once you have a new auditor, the new auditor would like to ask the predecessor auditor certain questions. And basically, it's something that's required. You have. So for example, make sure it's required. So what happened is the, uh, the old auditor, the predecessor auditor, the first thing they have to do is they have to ask the client because there's a confidentiality problem. They have to ask the client. If the client says yes, then they would answer a question. If the client says no, then they don't have to give you anything. But let's assume they say yes. And if they say no, well, you have to be very careful if the client is if, if it's not allowing the predecessor auditor uh, to speak about the relationship with the new auditor. Daddy, no. it. How did you do, Daddy? I didn't, I didn't know how to get That's the, fine. That's the fine. arrow, but I didn't see any X. It's okay, no problem. But it's 
Let's take a look at this questions. Inquiries of the predecessor auditor, it means the old auditor, prior to the acceptance of the engagement should include specific questions regarding what? What is this? First of all, this is a required procedures. So we have the new and the old auditor. The new auditor is required to ask the old auditor certain questions. Now the predecessor auditor or the old auditor, they're gonna go to the client and ask the client for permission because they cannot give you any info if the client says no. Now, if the client says no, you should question accepting the agreement, accepting the engagement, but you have to know this up to this point. They will ask them this about, about this agreement with management as to accounting principle and auditing procedures. Will they ask them about this? Well, what do you think? Should they, should they ask them about this? I would say yes. If you're taking on a new client and you can talk to the old auditor, wouldn't you ask them? You know, was there any disagreement with management as to accounting and auditing procedures? So one is definitely an answer. So we keep A, we take out B, we keep C, take out D. We're down to 50-50. Can we ask them about the integrity of management? Let me ask you this. Would you ask them, if you're the new auditor, would you like to know about the integrity, how ethical, how ethical they are, how ethical they are? And the answer I would say, Yes, I would like to ask them about the management integrity. Therefore, two is also a correct answer. Both answers are correct. One and two. One and two are correct. Now, you might also, as a new auditor, you might ask other questions like any disagreement. Any disagreement or any, we talked about disagreements are here, but any communication with the corporate governance about any fraud, um, any anything that they're not complying with any rules of regulation um, also why are they changing the auditor for what purpose are you hiring us why so why are you hiring us that's another question why are they hiring us okay if there is any communication between the man the management and the corporate governance and any regulatory body we need to know about this but remember if the client says no, you can, the, the old auditor cannot communicate, that's why you should be very careful. Now, also, you have to understand that the new auditor, they can also conduct their own investigation if they like to, to find information about management integrity on the side. But the point is, the whole, the whole point of this question is you have to understand that when you take on a new client during the planning stage, during the planning stage, you have to learn as much as possible. And this is a good opportunity to learn from the old auditor what's going on. On. So make sure you know this. Let's take a look at this question. Which of the following should be considered by a, by a CPA prior to acceptance of an audit engagement by a non-issuer? So what should you take into account? What should you consider prior to your acceptance? Should you take into account the quality of the accounting record? Should you take this into account? I would say, of course, you should take it into account. How good is their accounting record? Why? Because if they don't have good accounting record, if you cannot collect enough sufficient appropriate evidence to support your opinion you might have a scope because you can't that's a limitation now knowing knowing that their accounting record is bad it doesn't mean you don't engage but no one ahead of time will help you prepare therefore i would say a is a correct answer we'll take out b we'll take out d so now too do we have to know about the future of the company do you have to know about the future of the company about their future specifically not future future plans of the company and the answer is yes why 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 are they hiring you that's the thing what, what is the purpose of the audit is it for an ipo i need to know this are you going public is it for a loan is it to renew your line of credit i need to know why are you engaging me in an audit what's your future plan i have to know this as well you want to know again as much as possible about your client before because remember once you take on a client that that's the thing you associate your name with that client so if there's any problem with that client if the prop if the client having any problems and it's going to reflect on the firm that's why you would need to learn as much as possible as much as possible okay so make sure we know this so the that's that's the big idea you, you need to know as much as possible about the client all the following are correct 
regarding an auditor's understanding with the potential client prior to begin an audit except. So they are all correct except one. Okay, let's take a look at what are they. The, uh, the understanding should cover responsibilities of the independent auditor. Let me ask you this. Do you want the client to know what's your responsibilities? I would say that's the first thing you want to make sure you want to you want to make sure you make you make them aware of is you, is is how much are you responsible for okay basically you're responsible for issuing the fine, issuing an opinion based on reasonable assurance so on and so forth so i would say you'll have to uh, uh you have to kind of uh make sure that understanding with the potential okay. client exists there a b the understanding should cover limitation of the engagement sure there's going to be limitation the auditor, the, the, auditor, the auditor is not perfect. There is a risk you may miss fraud. There is a risk you may miss material misstatement. And you have to kind of let them know that's the case. So you have to let them know. B is out. C, the understanding should be in a form of an engagement letter in order to be in conformity with auditing standard. So the question here is, do you have to have an engagement letter? Do you have to have an engagement letter? And the answer is, guess what? No, you don't have to have an engagement letter. That's a practice. Okay, you want to have an engagement letter, but you don't have to have it in, in accordance with, uh, in conformity with the auditing standards for an audit. Okay? Now, listen to me carefully. If you are doing a compilation, if you are conducting a review, then that's a must. Okay? So the understanding should be a form of an engagement letter, not necessary not necessary so I would say C is a good candidate but let's look at D the understanding should list the audit fees and the frequency of billing I would say yes because when you do an audit you are not doing an audit based on some type of a contingency and that's gonna kind of in a sense impair your independence and you become basically part of the client so you want to let them know this is my fee up front and this is how often am I gonna be billing you okay so that's very important that's very important that's also a must okay otherwise you don't go um, blindly and suddenly you are in bed with the client without you even noticing. So C is the correct answer. Management responsibilities in the in the engagement letter should include which of the following? Now, management what is the management responsibilities? We talked about the engagement letter. That's not that's not. It's a practice, but it's not in conformity with the accounting auditing standard. And you'll be stupid not to have an engagement letter, although it's a practice. So what should the engagement letter? spells out as far as management responsibilities one adjusting the financial statements to correct material misstatement who should adjust the financial statements should the auditor adjust it or should management i would say management because once we do adjustments it means we are kind of doing managerial work operational work that's not our job basically kind of financial accounting work that's not we can do that so they adjust the financial statement therefore a will stay c will stay d will stay b is out Identify and ensure that entity complies with, with, with rules and regulation. Whose responsibility to make sure that the company complies with rules and regulation? Whose responsibility? That's management responsibility. I would say two will stay. So one and two will stay. C is out. Now we have to find out is number three. Selecting and applying accounting principle. Who selects and apply accounting principle? Would the auditor do so or, or do management do so? Of course, management select the appropriate, and we judge it, but we don't select and apply it. We judge that process, whether they are doing it or not. We don't select it. Therefore, C is also a correct candidate. Therefore, the answer is D. Also, what's important in the management, resp uh, management responsibilities to be spelled out is they're responsible for the internal control. They're responsible for making the accounting record available to us, we make sure they spell this out. We want to make sure that at the end of the period, they give us what's called a wrap or representational letter. All these topics, as well as other topics, are covered in my auditing course. Make sure if you need any additional resources, supplemental resources to pass your auditing section of the CPA exam, check out my website. That's all what I'm going to say. You can add, in my opinion, 10 to 15 points, it will make your journey to the CPA easier. I don't replace your CPA course. I complement your CPA course. I supplement your CPA course. So make sure you know this. I am not, if I if I can be a CPA course on my own, I will charge you much more than what, I'm, what I charge you now. Anyhow, 
Remember that investing in your career is an investment. It's an asset, not an expense. Investing in your CPA is a lifetime investment. It's going to pay dividend for years. Don't shortchange yourself. Study hard. Stay safe, especially if we are staying, if we are living, still living this coronavirus days. Good luck.